Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at some methods of the collectors class that are basically equivalents of stream operations that we've already seen. And as we go through this video, you're going to probably be thinking, why do we need these? For example, why do we need counting when we've already got the count terminal stream operation? And the answer is, as we'll see in the next video, that we can combine these using grouping by to do things that will be difficult or impossible if we stuck to using only the intermediate and terminal stream operations that we've already seen. Nevertheless, the similarity of these things with the operations that we've already seen in this course is going to mean that they're pretty easy to use. Now, I want some data that we can use to create streams here. And since I'm using Java 16, I'm going to use the record keyword that was added to Java relatively recently because I want to use person objects as I've already used previously in this course. But I don't really want to type out all that stuff myself. And the record keyword gives us a way of creating these person objects using a very brief syntax. So let's here type record person and we'll give person a string name and a int age. And I just need the brackets there. So this actually gives us, in effect, a person class. The hash code and equals methods are defined for us. There's a toString method that's automatically defined. And there are get methods for name and age. And they are called name and age rather than get name and get age. But apart from that, this is exactly as though I had defined a person class as I previously have done with these particular attributes. Now let's add some people to a list. So I'm going to say here var people equals list dot of and we'll have some people in here. Let's have new person Bob and he can be 25 and I'm going to duplicate him and we'll just put in some new names here. Let's have Sue, Raj, Pete, Raj and I'm going to give them different ages. I'll have two that are 25. I'll have someone here that's 32. Let's have someone that's 40 and I'll have someone else that is 32. I'll maybe move this bracket back here to try to format it a bit nicely. And we're going to start by looking at the counting collector, which is a method of the collectors class. Since I'm going to be using lots of methods from collectors, up here, I'm going to do what I did in a previous video and type import static java.util dot stream dot collectors and we want an asterisk here so now we can use any methods of the collectors class so we can use any of these basically without prefixing them with collectors so imagine we've got a list of people let's say people dot stream to create a stream and supposing we want to count these people we've seen it previously we can do it just using the count terminal stream operation so I can say here var result one equals this stuff. And then let's output result one. And this is something that we've seen previously in this course. So if I run this now, we get a count of the number of people as you'd expect. But we can also do that using a collector. Let's copy this. And I'm going to rename this to result two. And instead of count for the terminal operation, I'm going to write collect. And then we can write counting in here. So collect expects something that implements the collector interface and the methods that are attached to the collectors class implement that interface. They are collectors. So we can simply supply them to collect here. And if we run this, it does exactly the same thing as before. And as I mentioned, you are going to think, well, isn't that a bit useless? Why would I do this? in this more complicated way when I can just do this. And the answer to this is the same as the answer to all the other things that we're going to see, which is that, as we'll see in the next video, we can combine collectors together to do some very powerful stuff. So for another example, let's take a look at filtering. Filtering works with collectors, just as you've seen previously. I'm going to copy this and we'll have result three. And let's write here filtering. And now we have to supply some kind of Boolean filter. So let's say we're only interested 
in people who are younger than 40, which should filter out Pete here. So I can get the object with a lambda expression and we can say, actually, let's call this P because we're dealing with people, so that's a bit more appropriate. Let's say P dot age is less than 40. And then we need to supply to filtering another collector that in this case could simply specify how we want to collect our results. Let's say here to list, which we've seen previously. And now when I run this, what we get is a list of people, objects, who are less than 40 years old. So we could have achieved this again, just using filter as an intermediate stream operation. At the moment, this is just another way to do this. Similarly, we could use mapping. So if I copy all that and we change this to result four, and we say here we want mapping, and I could map, for example, just to the name of the people. So I get a stream of strings. And if I run that, we get the names of the people. And you might already kind of guess that, well, if that's a collector, we could put other collectors there and we could kind of bolt them together and combine them. But we'll look at that in the next video. Now, another way to do this would simply be to write person colon colon name. And if we run this, we get exactly the same results. Now, this might look a bit confusing if you're not too familiar with method references. What is this? This is an unbound reference to a non-static method. It's unbound in the sense that there's no person object here that we've specified. And this is not a static method. It's a normal get method, which ordinarily I would call get name. But when we use the record keyword right here, it gives the get methods the same names as the fields. And maybe it's worth just taking a second just to illustrate how that works in case you're not too familiar with method references. So this is basically a function that accepts a person object and returns whatever we've specified with this method reference. So I could use the function interface. The function interface has an apply method, which takes an argument of type that we can specify here, let's say person. And that apply method returns an argument of the type which I can specify here. Let's call it string. Let's call that func and set that equal to person colon colon name. And I need to add the import for function. And perhaps surprisingly, that actually works. This is standard method reference stuff. And we can then say system.out.println and we can do func.apply. And now we need to pass in an actual person that we want to get the name of. So I could say, for example, people.get from my list of people and just get the first person. And if I run that, you see that we get Bob, who is the first person in the list. So that's how this is possible. It's because we can create these unbound references to non-static methods. And then the function entity that's returned expects you to pass a person in, in order to be able to actually get the name attribute in this case from that person. Flat mapping again works in a way that we've already seen with the intermediate flat map operation. We can use flat mapping to turn a single element into multiple elements. As an example of that, imagine that we want to create a stream consisting of the names of these people, but also their ages in the same flat stream. Let's copy this and paste it down here and change this to result five. And here I'm going to use flat mapping. We still need that to list to specify how to collect our elements together. And here we're going to get the people in our list. And remember, flat map operations have to return a stream of elements. So let's say here, list.of.stream. And what are we going to put in list.of? Let's put p.name, that's our get method, and p.age. So now if we run this, we get a stream where we're collecting together in a list the names and ages of all the people in the original stream. So if you have seen the video where I covered flat mapping, you'll recognize this as exactly the same thing. It's just in a kind of collector form. And of course, we could go on to combine other 
collectors at this point here where we've simply used a straightforward to list. Joining also works exactly as you'd probably expect. Let's maybe copy this and let's imagine that we want to join together the names of the people. I'm going to change this to result six. We'll actually use a map just to get person name into the stream instead of the person objects. We'll get rid of all, all of this stuff and then we can use the joining collector here to join the names together. And it's that simple. If we run it, we can see that now we've got all the names joined together and we can specify a delimiter there. So let's say that I want to join them all with a comma. We can put a comma right there as a form of joining that accepts a delimiter like that. And then we've got them all joined with commas. The reducing collector allows us to reduce the elements in the stream in whatever way we like. So it's similar to the reduce operation that we've previously seen. Let's copy this. We'll have result seven. And imagine we wanted to implement joining ourselves for some reason. So we can have reducing here. And there is a version of it that takes an initial identity element. And then we can have a Lambda expression for accumulating the elements in the stream as we've seen exactly previously. And let's just use a plus to join these strings together. And if we take a look at that, we've joined them together. So of course we'd normally use joining for this, but this is more flexible if you want some kind of custom way of reducing your streams using a collector. Now we've got a bunch of methods that I'm going to go through pretty quickly. We're not going to look at every one of these because they, they do pretty similar things. But suppose we want the average age of the people. We've got three different kinds of averaging collectors and the type that you use just depends on the input to your collector. So in this case, the ages of my people are all integers. So I'm going to use averaging int to get their average age. Let's duplicate this and change it to result eight. So I don't want this map operation, get rid of that. And here we're gonna write averaging int. What do we want to average? Well, it's gonna be person colon colon age. And it would also help if I spell this correctly. So now if we take a look at result eight, we've got that average age 30.8. So although it's called averaging int, it will return a double if there are no elements in the stream, you're going to get zero return there and it works exactly as you'd expect. So if we had double values that we wanted to average, we'd have to select averaging double instead, for example. We've also got summing operations and they work exactly as you'd think. Let's take a really quick look. So if I just duplicate this and change this to result nine and we'll have summing int because we want to sum a load of ints now and if we run this we get the sums of these ages 154 and finally we've got these summarizing versions of these so in this case again we've got int so i'm going to choose summarizing int to summarize let's duplicate this and change this to 10 and change this to summarizing int and when we run this what we actually get is a int summary statistics object that gives us a bunch of statistics about whatever we've summarized. We've got the count, the sum, min, average, and max values. So this is all pretty straightforward. And in many cases, if this is all you wanted to do, you will be better off using a terminal stream operation other than collect, something that we've already seen in this course. But in the next video, we'll take a look at grouping by and there we'll see how you can really begin to leverage the power of these collectors. Don't forget, if you register free to my website, caveofprogramming.com, you get immediate access to a bunch of free courses. And do consider clicking like on the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much. And until next time, happy coding.